Prop types are incredibly useful when it comes to fixing and finding bugs in React, and in this video I'm going to give you a complete crash course on everything you need to know about prop types. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now I just have a really basic React application set up, and I have my app.js, and all this is doing is rendering out our component. We're passing in the name Sally and the age of 15. And in our component, we're just rendering out a string that says in five years, print out the name, will be, and we're adding five to their age. And you'll notice on the right hand side of my screen, it says in five years, Sally will be 155. But if you remember, we passed in 15 as the age of Sally. And this right here is a super common bug that you're going to run into when you're writing React code. This age should be a number, but I'm passing it in as a string by accident. So it's causing a bug where it's making the string 155 instead of 20 like it should be. If I change this to be a proper number instead of a string and save, you can now see that Sally will be 20 in five years, which is the correct age. So this is something that is a big bug that you're gonna run into. It's really hard to fix if you accidentally introduce this and don't see exactly where the code is outputting. But by using prop types, this is a super easy problem to avoid and you're never gonna have this issue again. And this is really why prop types are really useful. Also, you could use TypeScript instead of your application, but sometimes the overhead of adding TypeScript is too much when all you want is some really small type checking in like a smaller application or just for a few locations. And that's where prop types really excels. So let's change this back to how it was before. And what I want to do is install prop types so we can actually see how we can implement this and fix this bug. So to do that, we need to actually install the prop types library. It used to be included in React, but now it is separate. So we can just say npm i prop types, just like this. That's going to install everything we need for prop types. And once that's done, we can restart our application and actually start using it. Let's just start up our application. And now to define prop types, we just go to the component that we want to define our prop types for. For example, this is going to be this component here. And all we need to do is import prop types. So we're going to import prop types from prop dash types. And then this is going to be the exact same, whether this is a class component or a function component, it does not matter at all. And all we need to do here is just take our component name we just say dot prop types and set this equal to an object. Make sure this is a lowercase prop types here, just like that. And this object is going to have a key for each one of our props. So in our case, we have a prop for name and a prop for age. So we'll just say name and we're gonna say age. Those are our two different keys. And then we just need to define the types for these. So we can say prop types dot. And as you can see, we have a bunch of different functions and properties we can use. For us, a name is just going to be a string. So we can use the string property. And that is essentially mapping this prop type of string to our property of name. Same thing with age, we can get our prop types dot number because this is going to be a number. And now when we save, you're gonna notice nothing actually changes. But if we actually just come over here and inspect our page, and we go over to the console, you're gonna notice we have an error in our console. It says warning, failed prop type, invalid prop age of type string supplied to component expected number. Essentially it's saying, hey, for the prop type of age, we expected it to be a number, but we actually gave it a string. So if we go into our app, you can see we passed in a string instead of the correct number. Now, if we change this to a number and save, you're gonna notice we no longer get that error. This is showing up because it was from before, but now if we just save, you know, and if, if we refresh our page, you can see that that error no longer shows up in our console because we fixed the incorrect prop type. And that's where all your prop type errors are gonna show up. They're gonna show up in the console of your application. So it still does require a little bit of work to make sure you dig through the console to see if you have any of those errors showing up. But if you have good testing and such showing up, you can really easily see where these errors are. That's one advantage TypeScript has is it shows up in your editor, but TypeScript has a lot of extra overhead while prop types you can just add and remove at will without any extra work. Now let's say for example, we actually remove the age here and we click save. We come over here, you know, we refresh our page. You notice we don't get any errors in our console at all. But you'll see here it says in five years, Sally will be NAN. Obviously that's incorrect. That's because by default, all the prop types you define are optional. In order to make a prop required, you need to make sure you specify the is required property. So after you define what type the property is, just put is required at the end, and that'll make the property required. So now we made sure our name and age are required. So now when we save this, you can see we get an error that says the prop age is marked as required, but its value is undefined, as in it's not being passed along. So immediately that's throwing us an error in the console, so we know that there's something wrong with our application. Now, so far we've only covered string and number, but there's a lot of other basic types you can check for. For example, there is an array that you can check for. Boolean is just dot bool. You can check to see if it's a function. You can check for number like we've talked about. Object, which is just a generic object of any type. You can check for a string. 
And then finally, you can check for symbols. So that's all your basic different types of prop checking, but there's also some React specific props that you can check for things such as components and renderability. So if we just wanna to check to see if a prop is able to be rendered, let's just come in here and we'll say renderable, and we're just gonna return that. We'll just say return renderable. So if we wanna see if something is renderable, well, what we can do is come in here with the actual name, and there's a prop type called node. Node just means it's renderable. This could be a string, an array, a component, something like that, something that is renderable in React. So if we go in our app.js, we make sure we take renderable, and we make sure we pass it something like a string that says hi. Now we're not gonna get any errors, and you can see it prints out hi to our screen up here. But if we pass it something that's not renderable, for example, we pass it an object that just has, you know, A1, and we save, you're gonna notice we don't get anything rendered out here. We're going to get an error because this isn't even renderable. And also we're going to get an error for our prop type. If we just scroll up far enough, you can see we have an invalid prop renderable supplied to component. It expected it to be a React node, essentially something that can be rendered and an object is not renderable by React. Also, what we can do inside of here is if we wanna make sure it's an actual React component, so this would only work for React components, we can come in here and say that we expect this to be an element. And then what we could do is, you know, for example, pass in here a React component. So we could just say some component, whatever it is, and now it's going to render out that component, whatever it is that we want to pass to this. It could be another component, whatever. It just has to be a React component, otherwise it's going to throw an error. An actual really useful case for where you would want to do this, if we just clean up our code a little bit and get rid of this, and we'll just render out null for now, is if you want to make sure a component only accepts one child component. We could say that we want to take the children property, it has a prop type of element, and we want to make sure it's required. This means that a component can only ever have one single child, and it has to have one child, and that child is a React component. So it's a really useful way to be able to do this and make sure we pass a child to our component. As you can see, we're getting an error if we just scroll down to the bottom here, and that error is essentially saying that we don't actually have a component being passed in. As you can see here, it says the prop children is marked as required in component, but its value is undefined. So we're not actually passing that child in, so it's giving us an error. Now, the final React specific type that I want to talk about before we start diving into some of the more advanced type checking is going to be to check to see if this thing is the name of a component. So the way we can do that, instead of using element, is we could just change this to element type. You know, this would be for whatever prop component name. Commonly, you'd see this as like as. If you've used React Router before, you would use the as property. We could just say, you know what, render this component as a link, for example, or we render the link as a component. We just pass it the name of a component and it's going to do some stuff in the code with that. That is what element type is going to be referring to, the name of a component as the component like this. Now with that done, we can kind of dive into some of the more advanced type checking. So if we come into here, one thing that we can check for is any. So let's just say we have a prop name and we wanna make sure that it could be anything, string, number, boolean, I don't care what it is. Well, you just say prop types dot any. This is going to be for any property at all. And generally, if you do this, you would just wanna make it required. So this is saying, hey, I have a property for name. It could be literally anything, I don't care what it is. It's just going to be required. So that's one thing that you'd wanna use. Generally, try not to use any, but if you have to, this is what you would use. Another thing that we can look at is for multiple types. So let's say that we wanna have a string or a number. This property could be a string or a number, but we can use a function on prop type. This function is called one of type. This one of type takes in an array of different prop types. So we could say this is going to be a prop type of string, or it's going to be a prop type of number. We pass it the array of string and number, and that just means this property string or number can be either a string or a number. So if we pass in here, string or number, and let's just clear out a console, and we pass it in a string at first, no error. We pass it in a number, no error. But if we pass it in something like an array, you're gonna notice now we get an error because string or number was supplied and it shouldn't have been a array, it should have been a string or a number. Now something that's pretty similar to one of type is using the one of function. So we can just say one of like this, and this instead of taking an array of props, takes an array of values. And this is really useful if, for example, you have an enum for like different states. So let's just say that this is going to be a state and it has values where it can either be, for example, loading or it can be ready. So these are the only two values allowable for this state. So now if we try to pass in state here, make sure I just close this out, and we pass it in the string of loading, you can see it works. We pass it the string of ready, it works. If we pass it a string that's not in that list, you'll notice it gives us an error saying, hey, this was supplied, but it's not either loading or ready. Another really cool thing we can do is, remember we could say that something was a type of array, but well, we can actually use a step further from array and use array of, 
that'll actually type check the values in our array. So by saying it's a property of array, it just means it's an array of whatever. So we could just say this is an array, and inside of our app, we have an array that's being passed in. Let's just say we pass in an array that goes one, two, three. Pretty self-explanatory. As you can see, we have no errors over here. Well, now what we can do is we can say array of, and we can see that we want this to be an array of number. So we can say prop types dot number. So now, since we're passing it an array of numbers, this works. So if we pass it an array of strings, for example, you're going to notice now when we save this, we get an error because it's saying that the array has values that are not numbers inside of it. So this is a great way to make sure that the values inside of your array are exactly what you want. You can even go a step further and combine multiple of these together. We could say it's going to be one of, we could say one of type prop types dot number or prop types, oops, prop types dot string. Make sure we put that inside of an array. And now essentially what we've done is we've said, hey, we're going to have an array. And in that array, everything is either going to be a number or a string. And now you can see we can pass it strings, we can pass it numbers, and it's going to work just fine. But as soon as we pass it something that's not a number, such as an array, you're going to see it throws an error because we're passing an array, which is not a number or a string. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is going to be the shape and exact properties. And these are some of the most useful because they allow you to define different objects. So let's just say that we have a person here. This person has a bunch of different properties on them. We could say prop types dot shape, and this allows us to define the shape of this person. This just takes an object. This is like nesting your prop types inside of each other. Let's say the person has a name, and the name has a prop type. And this prop type is going to be string. And let's say it has an age, which has a prop types dot number, just like that. So now we have a person with a name and an age that we're passing. So if we go into app.js, if we take our person, and we're going to pass in an object, which has a name of Kyle, and we'll say that age is 26. And we save, you notice we get no errors. But if we make this age a string, we're now going to get an error because it's saying that this should have been a number. And that's by using this shape property. Something kind of interesting though, if we go back to where this was working, and we add an additional property such as just say favorite food, we put rice inside of here. You'll notice we don't actually get an error. That's because the way shape works is it just defines the overall shape, but it doesn't have to exactly match this. It's just saying, hey, this person object has a name and it has an age. If you want it to only have a name and age, then we would replace shape with exact. And now we're going to get an error because it's saying, hey, this can only have a name and an age, but it also has this favored food property. So there's clearly an error here. So shape and exact are going to be some of the most useful properties you can use. And also you can combine is required with any of these. And for example, we could make this a one of type, you know, we can really combine a bunch of different things together. So that's the really nice thing about prop types is you can kind of infinitely combine them together to make more and more complex prop types, to really define exactly what your application looks like. And then you can use the console log errors to figure out where you're having problems, where you're not passing the correct thing in. And that's all there is to prop types. If you enjoyed this video and want to dive even further into React, I highly recommend you check out my full React course linked in the description down below. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.